guys, it's Varian, and today we are going to be talking about some more music theory. Uh, a little bit more advanced music theory. Now, I say the word advanced a little bit lightly because it might rustle some people's jimmies. Uh, the reason being that, look, everyone's definition of advanced not only changes over time, but also changes depending on where you are in the musical landscape. So what's advanced for a music producer is way different than what's advanced for a professor of jazz, you know? So we're going to mostly just assume that we're a bunch of producers here and we know the basics. We know some scales major, minor, we know the chords, we know the intervals, we've seen them, we've done them, not our first rodeo, but we're ready to bump it up just a notch. And that's where I'm going to be attacking this video from over the next probably 30 or 40 minutes. So the um, concepts that I'm going to be explaining in this video the first one that I would like to touch on is modes. That's M-O-D-E-S, modes. Um, it's essentially scales within scales. I mean, you know, for instance, let's say we have our C major scale. Right? But... What were to happen if instead of starting on C using the same notes, we started on E? It's wildly different. And we're going to dive pretty deep into that. So I'm excited to get into that because this is going to really, really increase your vocabulary in terms of being able to express feelings and emotions through melodies and through chords. Um, so the second thing that I would like to touch on is uh, something called a cadence. And a cadence is how you sort of resolve chord progressions. Now, there is an entire video on advanced chord progressions, so this sort of blurs the line but I felt like it felt more in here because I could then tie it into the advanced chord progression video much more seamlessly. Um, we're going to be learning two types, and I'll show you a third type uh, just for fun. Um, and then also just for fun, because there's so much in music theory, uh, we're going to be learning something called the tetrachord also known as the block chord. Now, why three things and not advanced music theory? Well, saying advanced music theory, uh, as I explained before, is not only subjective, it's also extremely ab abstract. I mean, you have essentially an entire set of concepts. And we're not talking as about like a set of, you know, 10 or 12 concepts. This is essentially uh, when you start getting into the really, you know, advanced stuff. Mathematical. It's got an air of physics to it. It's scientific. And there's hundreds and hundreds of possible topics with, within just the realm of music theory. So I picked one practical, one, actually two practical, um, and one fun one. And then uh, one of the practical ones actually leads into another video. So I f felt like that was a pretty decent balance of what to choose from. I definitely think modes are the first thing you should do once you get down sort of the basics of music theory. So let's just get right into it. It's almost been five minutes and um, yeah, let's just, let's just do it. So, you know... There is a sort of sequential, how do I put this? There's sort of a sequential sense to modes. 
meaning there's a mode that starts on C. There's a mode that starts on D. There's a mode that starts on E, so on and so forth. And since we'll be using the C major scale, this entire video, except for the tetrachords and no, even, yeah, even the, um, the cadences will still be in C major. Um, it's just nice, easy, safe. You don't really have to think too much about flats and stuff like that. You know, I think that you guys will get this. And the more that you get this and you get this and you get this, the more second nature becomes, the better you are able to sort of implement this into your music. So using all of the notes within the C major scale, we can look at our first mode, and that is the Ionian mode. Each mode has a name they're all Grecian in, in nature, so yes, you will be learning a little bit of Greek today, which is also kind of cool. Um, and I also have a mnemonic device that I will teach you at the end to help you remember the order of the modes. So let's take a look. Let's have a look-see. Let me make sure that I'm all laid out properly. Here we go. And we've got a bigger keyboard, so you can see nice and clear, both the piano roll and the piano itself. So the first mode is Ionian. And what happens when you have all of the notes of the C major scale and you start on C? Well, it's just the C major scale, and that's exactly what that is. So if you wanted to sound like an academic, which I don't recommend <laughs> unless you're in a very very uh, complex situation where you needed to do this you can refer to c major as c ionian but let's go ahead and let's just play it through let's talk about it just for a second and then at the end of every mode as it's played through I've got a little bit of an example to highlight its unique personalities, let's just say. So without further ado, let's get into modes. Of course we know that. So this is what it feels like. Right? It's got kind of that major key, everything's gonna be okay. It's got the nice half step up into that C, so it's the, the perfect resolution. And we'll get more into that, especially when we get into uh, cadences, um, because cadences are all about how you return back to the root. Also known, this is a new word here, also known as the tonic. Um, so there's more, there's more Greek for you. Uh, so getting back to our root note, our tonic C, we have this nice little... And that's pretty, pretty, you know, it's, it's definitely indicative of something major. Not always, but listen for it, you know? So it's got this lullaby-esque quality to it. The major, the Ionian, whatever you want to call it. And if you slip up and you say the Ionian scale, no one's going to crucify you for it, dude. Because modes are just scales within scales. It's still a scale. A scale by any other name. So the second one we have is Dorian, which is using all of the notes in the C major scale, but starting on D, and this is what it sounds like. And this is what it feels like. So... With Dorian, it's very Gregorian chant, very medieval. A lot of video game music uses this. A lot of film and trailer music uses a ton of Dorian. I mean, I think trailer music and a lot of action Hollywood scores are pretty much written ex entirely on D Dorian. It's just absolutely phenomenal how much of it is this sort of... 
you know, that sort of hi-ho feeling. It's, it's actually really useful when someone, maybe a client or maybe someone that you're working with wants to invoke that sort of feeling. Um, he head straight for Dorian. Head straight for it, man. And that's what I mean by building a vocabulary. It's instead of noodling around trying to find something that sounds Celtic or whatever, you can just pull this out of the bag. The third mode we have is called Phrygian. And this is kind of one of the out there scales, but I love it. I especially love we're gonna we're gonna show you something a little bit. Especially love when you when you just trick it out, when you pimp it out just a tiny bit. Uh, but this is what it sounds like in its natural form. So this is uh, Phrygian, using um, all the notes of the C major scale starting on E. So sounds a little bit of exotic. Gets a little you know, normal at times, a little bit exotic. It's like right in the middle there. So let's check it out and see what it feels like. Just kind of, you know, riffed out a little bit. God, it wants to be that Middle Eastern feel so bad, right? It's, it's pretty amazing. It's got that na 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 with the F, or I'm sorry, the E and the F. Na na na, and it's got the D, so it's got that. It's especially got that na 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 na, wonderful feeling. But then the rest of the scale is kind of a normy sort of feel. So, how do you get that real, you know, Middle Eastern feel? And what you do in this case is you uh, take that. Uh, G and you up it to an A flat. So essentially you get a mode of a mode and it's called the Phrygian dominant mode or scale. And this is what it sounds like. There we go. That's what we were looking for when we said Middle Eastern and exotic. This is ex extremely metal. This is extremely exotic. So again, if you've got something you're working on and you need to bust out something that feels a little bit exotic, why not just throw in a dash of Phrygian? Because you don't have to use the entire scale. You can just dip into it. It's, that's the wonderful thing about scales is it's note by note, man. Just, you can even end on sort of like a, a Phrygian feel and start on another feel you can start on dorian and on phrygian why not it's it gets crazy and then you're starting to create all sorts of new modes i mean god there's so many freaking scales it's it'll it's uh do you hear in my voice how many <laughs> scales there are <laughs> and um if you ever do go down the rabbit hole of finding some exotic scales, you will laugh your ass off at some of these names people have come up with for them. It's just phenomenal. Lydian. Lydian. This is a safe, nice, uh, nice mode. And this is also a great time to demonstrate the feeling that a mode can bring to your song. So let's just take a listen to it straight up. This is starting on F or the fourth scale degree, whatever key you're in, it's the fourth scale degree. So like the latter half is like a major scale and the first half is like a whole tone scale. You know, the whole tone scale where it's just whole tones only. also known as the dream scale because in a lot of older cartoons uh, people would sort of glide up a harp or a piano in the whole tone scale and it would that's just registers to us as like whoa they're in a dream state um so that's what i mean by you know in the last example i said maybe you start on dorian and you come down on phrygian and then you just sort of are dipping in and out this starts on whole tone scale and Ends on like something that sounds and looks like a major scale. So 
you can look at modes as sort of from that perspective too and you get a lot of fun aspects to play with um let's take a listen to to lydian so it's actually a really 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 uh really yeah i wanted to say it a couple couple more times because it's really popular man this is almost as popular uh, you know, major and minor keys aside, this is one of the most popular modes you're going to hear, besides Dorian. Dorian, you're going to hear a lot, but Lydian, you're going to hear a lot as well. Um, there's all sort of descriptor feelings. You just It just depends on which chords you use with it, right? Because chords are really going to lay the foundation for you to sort of build off of them so that's both of them together create a feel and Lydian for me has always felt bright and has always felt hopeful because you get this sort of na 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 it's na 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 it's sort of got that you know floaty feeling but that's just this example you could totally write something oh I don't know really fun kind of dark with it like this popular song that many of you may know and that is absolutely lydian that's um that's the lost woods theme from uh, the legend of zelda i think uh, at this point it's in three four different games i don't i don't know um but let's just take a quick zoomy into it. And I want to show you guys just how incredible these modes sort of, you know, uh, change the, the feel of everything. So let's just, let's just, instead of, you know, C Lydian, let's go ahead and, you know, just turn this into just to a normal F major sort of feel and see what that sounds like so we're going to drop the uh, I'm sorry we're going to raise the B to C those are in the F major scale so they stay but what isn't in the F major scale but is definitely in C Lydian is this B, and that's what creates this awesome little tension, darkness moment. So if we had this in the key of F major, we'd drop this to a B flat, and then G, and that'd be fine. And this is what it sounds like normally, quote unquote. It's kind of hokey, isn't it? It's kind of like, you know, if you put some chords under it, and then I think maybe here, I don't know, like this. It's, it's like, it's almost like, again, just this major key lullaby sort of thing. It's hilarious. Ah, uh, but you drop this down back to its B sort of place and oh, there's that like mysteriousness whoops <laughs> there we go that's how you do it there's that mysteriousness <laughs> so do you see are you starting to see how modes are really just sort of taking the normal sort of scale vocabulary and making it much more interesting. So moving on, we've got the Mixolydian scale. You're going to hear this one a lot in jazz and funk and blues. This one is kind of, uh, this is one of the ones for me personally, when I'm driving um, and I'm kind of just minding my own business and a song comes on, I'm like, well, Mixolydian, it's, you know, pretty recognizable. 
probably won't be recognizable, you know, just played forward like this. But uh, I think, you know, once you dive a little bit more into modes and really start to make them your second nature, you'll definitely get what I mean. Oops, let's start from here. There you go. And in practice, this is what it sounds like. The famous lick, if you go into YouTube and you type in the lick, da -na 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 -na. that's absolutely Mixolydian. It is hilariously Mixolydian. Um, so again, jazz, funk, blues, Not you're not going to hear Mixolydian used to sort of create um, Gregorian chant, let's say. It's a, it's a, that's a mitch, mismatch of moods here. So again, back to that back to that notion that we're really just trying to increase the amount that we can say with our music. Moving on, we've got the Aeolian scale, the Aeolian mode, whatever you want to call it. And this sounds Kind of, kind of, kind of familiar. So if you're using all of the notes of the C major scale, starting on A, that's the, that's the A minor scale. What the heck? Yeah, it is. Absolutely it is. Because just as C, using all of the notes of the C major scale, C Ionian, therefore, you know, there has to be a sort of minor version of the mode. Um, and since we know that A minor is the relative minor to C major, we can therefore sort of see where the correlations lie. So the uh, sixth scale degree of uh, you know C is going to be this A minor thing, and we just call it A Aeolian. And again, you can just call it A minor. It's no, no, nothing new. It's your just, just your typical A minor. Nothing, nothing crazy at all. Moving along. This is where things get a little bit weird, man. Locrian. This is the final something about those seventh scale degrees, man. And and you'll you'll see what I mean when uh, we dive a little bit more into. Uh, chords and whatnot it's just something about those uh seventh scale degrees if you mess with them if you miss the wrong one you're doomed <laughs> no it's just they're they're always a, they're always weird they're just the weird kid in the cafeteria in the corner um and here's what it sounds like it sounds innocuous going up but when you start playing with it, you sort of realize, what the hell am I supposed to play under this besides just, like, the root of the mode? So, like, for, for instance, let me just play this for you, and then I'm going to play it twice, and I just want you, I'm going to play on loop, okay? Let's, let's just do that. I'm just going to play this on loop, and I just want you to just, like, just take in just the weirdness of it, and just try to imagine writing vocals on top of it if you're a vocalist uh playing chords under it just any bass lines under it just imagine anything very weird it is very hard for music theorists to incorporate locrian into their music so they usually don't so this is kind of a, a weird outlier mode. There's a lot of debate on, you know, s certain songs having it. Um, Bjork, Army of Me, people will argue that it's Phrygian. People will argue that it's Locrian. There's um, Juice Box uh, by The Strokes. It's kind of Locrian, but 
he sounds uh you know like locrian just kind of sounds like you're singing out of key on purpose to sound edgy i know justin timberlake does it on the way that you like i think the song is called it's more of like accidental than like sitting down with the quill pen and being like ah oh, yes locrian that's what justin timberlake is is writing let me just go ahead and break that down no 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 this is a very weird scale a lot of people don't mess with it for a very good reason. Um, if you want to get a weird feeling that kind of sounds low cream but is a lot more tameable, go with Phrygian because you still get this this sort of half step, na 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 na, na which the you know Phrygian mode has, but it doesn't have this other BS. I mean, look, it's like half step, half step whole step whole step <laughs> this guy's just like it's just strange it's just odd to look at odd to listen oh, let's just get out of here i'm, I'm, I'm done <laughs> so modes in essence it's um very important and you're not going to learn it all from this lesson and it's going to be described very differently by very different people why because when you start going down music theory everyone understands these things differently we all learned differently. We all understand it differently. We all articulate it differently. And there's a lot of debate when it comes to scales and modes. What scale is this in, you might ask to a certain music theorist. And they might say it's in this scale. And another person might say, oh, no, it's in this scale, flat 9, flat 13, you dumbass. It's all sorts of crazy when you go down the rabbit hole. And the same thing happens to chords. When we get into the advanced chords, I'm going to say probably the same stuff. That just depends on where you learned it and who taught you. And All that matters is that you can use it, right? That's all that matters. It doesn't matter about the sort of nerds on Reddit's music theory, you know, subreddit. It doesn't matter about... The professors at the local university doesn't matter what matters to you is how you are just using these modes to help say something with your music a little bit clearer than you would with just a normal major or minor scale so moving on i'd like to touch on cadences now again we're touching on chords here and i know that i'm doing a chord video but this is this is a really good sort of in-betweener because it helps illustrate the relationship of the tonic so the root note to the subdominant which is the fourth and the dominant which is the fifth scale degree so let's let's back that up whoa nick you just said like some words i might not understand okay so scale degrees, you know, we're talking about, you know, if this is the C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So the relationship to the uh, fourth scale degree from the first is known as a perfect fourth. This is taught in the intervals video that I've done a couple times across, I think my own YouTube channel and this site, I believe, if not, you just learned something. Um, the perfect fourth and the relationship from this, from C to the fifth scale degree, which is G, is known as the perfect fifth. Now, the fifth usually has a wonderful relationship back to the first, usually guides you straight home. And what better way to illustrate that than this following chord progression, which illustrates what's known as a perfect cadence. Cadence meaning a return home, back to that root note, back to that initial landing point where you feel like all is good with the world because it is resolved back to where you started and where your brain is 
So I've got C, I've got F major, a C major of course, F major, third inversion, so I have where the C would be normally up here, so F, A, C, you know, I put the C down here, so it starts on C, F, A, same notes, different order. If you don't know about inversions, now you do. So I've got F, I've got G, um, also on the third inversion, and this is just to keep the notes grouped together so that there's not too much uh, space. Um, you want to keep your, your notes sort of close together in proximity so it sounds nice and local, um, as I think is the best way for me to describe it. Um, if you jump too far ahead in the keyboard or too far below, it's going to sound like your chords are disjointed and you want them to sound like they're blended. So this is a great way. Um, I do, I did flip the C major to its second inversion where it starts on E at the end here, just so you can see that in a perfect cadence, the return home is a nice, perfect resolution just like in the C major scale. So let's just take a listen. <sighs> so why is this so perfect? Well, you've got this B flat, or sorry, this B natural going into the C. Now that's the same sort of thing that you would get if you were going up the C major scale and going Ah. <sighs> okay, all right. Um <laughs> bothers a lot of people, even non-musicians when things go unresolved like that when they just hang and then they resolve. You've got the G, which sort of stays the same, so that's nice. And then you've got this really great, just simple, whole tone uh, leap from D to E. And I think the that sort of symmetry, one is staying the same, one is going up one, one is going up two in terms of half steps. I think that symmetry really creates that perfection sound. And the plagial, I'm sorry, the perfect cadence, we're going to be learning about the plagial cadence next. Um, the perfect cadence, I think, is the one that people really like to hear in popular music. As well as, speaking of plagial, P-L-A-G-E-L, -E so you can see right here. The plagial cadence also works really well. It's also known as the sort of gospel cadence, and you'll see why in a second. Um, let me go ahead and play it for you, and then I'll sort of talk about it for a little bit. It's nice, right? So going from the first, you know, root, chord C major but instead of going one four five so C F G I'm going C G F one five four so I'm actually resolving the sub dominant to the tonic the fourth to the first and that creates some really interesting feels and I'm sure you felt that sort of gospel sort of feel when you got here <laughs> You know, that kind, of, that kind of stuff. Um, something really, really common with the plagial cadence is actually to walk down this so, so you would go something like dun, 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 which happens a lot, especially in um, the Beatles, Let It Be, which in the movie Across the Universe, they turned that song into a gospel track and it only proves my point to the millionth degree. 
because it sounds amazing when you can really, really bring out that gospel sort of resolution. Um, so yeah, the plagial cadence is, is pretty amazing. Um, you can have a lot of fun with cadences. I'm going to show you an interesting example of sort of a mishmash between a plagial cadence heading into a perfect cadence to create this sort of double cadence, half cadence. I don't know what you would want to call it, but it's fun. Check this out. So you think you're ending? Okay. Okay. And then So you get two for the price of one chord progression. So the third one that I wanted to show you is actually, it's a little bit of a goof. It's a little bit of a, a gaff if you want to play one on your friends that pisses everyone off. But check this out. So let's say instead of having the dominant G, that strong G to C. No. Instead of that, what if it just went to something entirely different and then just just left you left you for dead? Well, that's called an imperfect cadence, and you'll see why in a second. And don't worry, I will resolve it in the end so we can... You won't leave the video with blue balls because that's what this sort of uh, cadence will do to the ears. So let's say instead of heading from this beautiful G major, we just head into a B minor, B minor seven, I don't know. Sure, why not? So let's play this chord progression. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here he comes. Um... It's okay. <laughs> Ah, there you go. That's a lot better. So there's a an ancient, ancient Jesus Nick. Uh, this is what happens when you make forty minute long videos. <laughs> uh, there's an a, a, an old uh, sort of mythos about um, music theory professors when they teach imperfect cadences and. And, and really abstract music theory that really doesn't, you know, resolve well that when the class leaves, they uh, just get on the piano and they just go, ah, because they need that. They need that resolution or else they'll go home with blue balls of the ears. <laughs> so the, the, the final thing I'm going to teach you is it's kind of out there. It's, um, but it's fun and it's really effective, man. Let me tell you, this is, this is fun. And, um, you know, there's any amount of things I could have picked from sort of beyond basic music theory to teach you, but I felt like this was really cool um, for people to know. And this is tetrachords. Tetrachords is when you take the first four scales of a degree. So in C minor, we have C, D, E flat, and F and you play them all at once. That's it. That's it. That's a tetrachord. Now, when you play them as is, they sound a little bit just kind of weird and makes you kind of cock your ear. Like, why? Okay, but once you surround it with bass and sort of melody and a groove, they work wonderful. They also work as great steps, like ba da ba, you know, that kind of stuff. They work great in jazz. But check this out. Let's just add a nice little. Let's just. What does this sound like now that I've added an A flat in the bass? Okay, okay, okay. Now we're now we're starting to see some colors. Uh, that's another thing about enriching your your vocabularies. You've got also got more colors to paint with. Uh, let's try B flat in the bass here. Just throwing around notes in the bass over this 
tetrachord. Ooh, now we're starting to get into like a really nice jazzy place. If you want to impress people, if you're a guy and you want to really get a girl going, <laughs> ladies love the tetrachords with the bass and I'm now I tease people think it's really, really uh, pleasant sounding to play these kinds of chords alongside minor seventh chords. If you can learn minor seventh chords and tetrachords with decent you know notes in the bass, you're good. Just play them slowly and everyone will think you're a jazz master. Uh, I mean, with tetrachords, you can get all sorts of colors. Like, as I said, this one, let's try this C. So again, you're starting to see the jazz. Let's go back to this one. Instead of going to the B flat, let's try F. Okay, so that's one color. What if we went to E? Huh, that's like not even in, that's actually out of C minor. What does that sound like? Ooh, that's a little bit ugly, a little bit nasty, but in the right context, squished between the right chords, it's beautiful. It's exactly the chord you need. So instead of noodling, you know that you can just sort of plop that down. Um. And remember that in jazz especially, <laughs> there's no such thing as a wrong note or a wrong chord. Just uh, you got to play at the right time with the right conviction. <laughs> so, yeah, man, tetra chords are fun. Uh, if you want, you can even extend it to five uh, scale degrees. And it becomes even more flourished and... Uh, just an example some of that sounded okay some of that sounded good some of that didn't sound so great and that's what you do with music you play I mean that's why you literally say I play music um, not just in the sense of strumming things or you know plucking keys or plucking strings it's also the mindset of playing around with these sort of things yeah music theory is it's pretty rigid. That's why a lot of people don't like it. That's why a lot of people are like, you know, I don't need music theory. I can come up with stuff in my head. It's like, that's great. Cool. But you're going to probably run into some trouble. And more than likely, people with a good sense of music theory are probably going to do what you can do in 12 hours in two. Because they can reach into their bag of tricks and pull out stuff. And just because it's rigid, and just because it sounds pretentious, I mean, look, you do this enough, you play with this enough, it becomes second nature where you don't even think about it. I don't walk around all day thinking about chord progressions, uh, you know, that are advanced, or I don't think about tetrachords when I'm, you know, on a date. That's pretty sad, but... You know, if I'm listening to a song and a certain scale or a certain chord hits my ear, I'm like, what is that? I can probably identify it. And so can you. And so will you if you keep this up, if you just keep up the study. And then it becomes second nature so that you don't even have to think about it. You just do it. I mean, granted, as I just said, there's a lot of times like I'll be driving in my car and Oh my god, this is the most Dorian thing I've ever heard in my life, but that's about it. That's all I'll say about it, and then just enjoy the track. I mean, just because, I mean, you learn about cinematography does not make you, you know, uh, some sort of film robot. If anything, it makes you appreciate films more, because you can say, oh man, nice shot. Dang, that's a nice shot. Co great color grading on that. Holy crap. Wonderful talent on that script. Jesus, perfect. 
time t like editing timing god you know people will, will will just say anything that sounds academic is pretentious and takes away from the feeling i i, I couldn't i couldn't disagree more i think it adds to it i think it adds to the appreciation so that's my little rant on music theory um i'm gonna dive into advanced chord stuff um in case anyone was wondering where the you know sixths chords and the thirteenths and the elevenths and the d diminish and the half and the mer 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 goes on it goes on and on i've been studying music theory for a long time and i still don't know like even a tenth of it but if you want to know someone who knows a lot about it look up jacob collier on YouTube. Listen to him talk about music theory. Type in Jacob Collier music theory. Watch him as he invents music theory. I watch him as he sort of, he's younger than me by the way, so of course that makes you feel like, oh man, <laughs> talking about negative harmony and flipping the circle of fifths on its axis in order to achieve the dark version of oh my god this kid is unbelievable but i bet if you asked him do you know everything about music theory he probably would be oh i don't even know 10 percent of it <laughs> and that's the way it goes that is the way it goes so thank you so much for watching this video if you're interested in learning more about music theory uh, feel free to watch some of these other videos feel free to do some self-homework on YouTube. There's endless amounts of videos from all perspectives, from all sides of looking at this. One of my favorite YouTube channels, um, I, I, of course I forget the name of it right now, <laughs> but just um, it, it goes into the music theory behind video game music and it's deep theory, man. So get ready for some words you may not know. Um, just, you know, type in Final Fantasy uh, music theory or Kirby music theory or Zelda music theory and you'll get it. It's um, it's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely a, a, a joy to watch. So thank you for watching this and until next time, I'll see you later.